इस ब्लूमबर्ग यू टीवी This is Talk Back. I'm Hindul Sen Gupta. I'm delighted to welcome a very special guest on the show today. She's written a new book. In that book, on the cover of the book, she's described as a unique person, somebody whose father was murdered, whose uncle was murdered, whose aunt was murdered, whose grandfather was murdered. She, of course, is Fatima Bhutto from the legendary Bhutto clan of Pakistan. Is she going to carry forward the legacy? And if yes. how will she do it i wanted to begin by asking you it's i read your book from cover to cover it must have been in some senses a cathartic process researching and writing the book and you pretty much say so in the book now that you're over and done with it do you feel more at peace or do you feel more troubled well it was a difficult journey to be on um not only because i had to retrace my father's murder but the murder of my uncle and my grandfather and uh my aunts as well it 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 did bring me closer i think to a lot of answers that i have always had on my mind writing this book for me was was a form of justice in in the form of memory um but certainly finishing the book and seeing the state in which these four murder cases are left in um seeing the extent to which people will go to obscure the truth is is troubling and it seems to me when i read the book that you're more troubled about pakistan than ever before as a young pakistani uh, it's incredibly heartbreaking to see uh foreign planes uh, traverse your skies and and kill your citizens uh at the behest of a foreign power um this is a war being fought on our on our home turf that pakistanis don't agree with that pakistanis don't think is just and i think the problem we see today is that the voices of 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 change or the voices of opposition or dissent um have the volume turned off on them there seems to be an effort to silence it these days and therefore is this book the beginning of your unsilencing i think i've been unsilent for a while so i don't know if it's the beginning of an unsilencing the public unsilencing but i think it's certainly a very large scale unsilencing um it's uh, a comprehensive unsilencing is this the beginning of the politics of fatima bhutto um you know i think the politics of fatima bhutto started a very long time ago um i've always been very political i've always written on political issues and i am politically active in my own ways um but it's absolutely not the start of any sort of uh political career in that sense uh I'm a writer. I've always wanted to be a writer. Are you therefore saying that you will not do not today and will not in the future, at least in the foreseeable future, contemplate any official political career as it were? Uh I I will not. And it's because I think dynasty I think is a very dangerous concept especially for countries uh like Pakistan because it <coughs> it uh, negates participation. uh it's an ex- exclusive system it's an entitled system and we can't really claim to be working towards any kind of uh open or participatory democracy when we are enhancing uh the politics of dynasty in your mind if you do not choose active politics how will you carry forward the legacy that you speak so poignantly so powerfully about in your book well i think certainly in my father's case his life was cut short um his life was cut short he was killed 2 days after his 42nd birthday so he didn't have the time to do his work legacies become a bit of a dirty word now i feel because it it seems to replace everything else it seems to replace principles and ideology and a commitment to public service but i think the idea of a political legacy uh, is again a tricky one um for my part you know i think this is a part of my father's legacy this is a part of what he was spending his life doing which is talking about um the corruption and power talking about um the lack of sovereignty you know the problems of the foreign policy um the issues on the grassroots level of politics so i i think of it really as 
um, a continuation of his work. One of the things I like very much is what uh, George Orwell said. George Orwell said, um, in a time of universal deceit, telling the truth is a revolutionary act. So, you know, I think of Songs of Blood and Sword as, as my revolutionary act. And if that's from the outside, then it's still an honor to be on the outside speaking openly. So much of your book is a critique not only of the policies of the current sitting government in Pakistan, the president, the prime minister, uh, their political legacy in a sense, but also of the people themselves. In fact, you essentially call them crooks, thieves and murderers. And you continue to live in that country. Are you ever scared? Well, it's, you know, that's a big question. But I, I don't think that fear um, is an acceptable motivator. I don't think that fear is a reason for us to censor ourselves. And fear is certainly not going to push me out of my country. Um, I think it's even more important, really, to speak about these issues. Uh, because we're talking about people in power and they have to be accountable, um, we have to realize that people have a responsibility uh, to their records. And these are the records of, of the current government, uh, which very conveniently were being wiped clean and, and whitewashed before their ascendancy to the highest offices in the land. Um, I think certainly with Songs of Blood and Sword now out, with it being published around the world, uh, it's out now in England and in Canada, India and Pakistan, um, as of yesterday. I think certainly the risks grow. Uh, I think one has to be careful um, and keep in mind the forces that we're dealing with. But uh, I think it's even more important that we keep speaking. You mentioned consistently in your book about how every decade a Bhutto is murdered. When you write, when you wrote this book and when it came close to being published and released around the world, did these thoughts or do these thoughts today disturb you? Well, it disturbs me that there are people who will go to no end to make sure that the truth is not heard. It disturbs me to know that power protects those um, who have an interest in obscuring the truth, who have an interest in obscuring justice. But it doesn't deter me because if we censor ourselves, we're only doing the government's job for them. Um, you know, my, I know also that we keep our histories alive. Um, we keep our histories alive through our memories and our archives and our records. And if we don't do that, we're doing a disservice not only to our generation, but to our communities, to, to our history. Um, and that's more important than things like fear. That's more important than, than things like power. Um, and certainly, you know, this book for me, Songs of Blood and Sword for me, um, is, is a labor of love. It's a, it's, a, it's a love letter, really, to my father. And, and, and love will always be a, a more powerful force than fear, I think. Is it closure, Fatima Bhutto? I don't think it's closure. I think when one is seeking justice, um, you can never really underestimate how long the road is. Um, I think it's a start rather than, than an end. I think the road to justice is long. I think life is long. And we seek it still. And I, I am hopeful that one day we will get justice.